Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to theCUBE's day three coverage of Google Cloud Next 23 from beautiful San Francisco. Lisa Merton and John Furrier. Can't tell you how great the weather has been the last few days at this conference. We've been having some amazing conversations with Googlers and its ecosystem. We're about to do that next as well. We have Ashish Sharma, the AVP of Engineering at Persistent, and Dimitri Coates joins us, VP Strategic Analytic Insight at Notified. Guys, great to have you on theCUBE. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for having glad us. And yeah, glad to be here. Ashish, give us kind of the, the current lay of the land at Persistent. What's going on since we last talked to you? Yeah, so, I mean, as you know, that Persistent is a global consulting digital engineering, uh, digital engineering firm. We are, you know, one of the uh, premier partners uh, for a Google Cloud. And uh, uh, one thing I wanted to, you know, uh, call out that being a partner with the Google Cloud, I think Google's partner team is probably, you know, one of the best in the ecosystem. They, they help us in, you know, getting the early access to all the cool stuff that they are building. And, you know, jointly, you know, uh, they work with us to make our, you know, customers Customers happy and you know us successful, so they they go uh, far enough to you know enable us and you know uh, kind of give us all that uh, arms and muscle so that we can deliver those services. So more recently means everything that is happening on next with the generative AI buzz around the generative AI, the Palm 2 upgrades and all that uh, that has been already open to us by, you know for a while now and. Our teams are, you know, diligently working enough to, you know, put some solutions. Those would help, uh, you know, few verticals, but more like on the horizontal side of it. But, you know, happy to talk more about that later. The AI has really been a gift for the industry, really from the, uh, the development standpoint, and also solutions. And Google's got great developer chops here with the AI. They're going for that, but they they got a lot of solutions. And Dimitri, you're here. You're a customer. Share the story of Persistent, your role with working with them, what's the project? Uh, so you guys got a partnership going there. Talk about your, what you're working on. Yep, so we've been working together for the past several years. Uh, Notified is in the public relations uh, and the investor relations space as well as digital events and experiences. So we help brands tell their stories. And uh, one of our product offerings is a media contact database where we uh, help PR professionals identify journalists who they might want to pitch their stories to, their press releases to, etc. And we've been using AI, before I guess AI was cool, to discover new journalists, discover new outlets, uh, discover influencers to enhance our uh, media contact database and enhance our uh, offering for PR professionals. So you must be scraping our, our Twitter feeds, looking at the linguistics, at what we're saying, getting a little sentiment analysis. <laughs> yes, all the natural language processing stuff, but of course with generative AI, this has taken us to the next level. Uh, so we actually launched a patent recently for smart press releases where we're going to, we already have in production an AI assisted press release generator, but we're going to be doing a lot more to help the PR professionals uh, with uh, managing the content, analyzing the content, predicting the likelihood of success, recommending journalists, kind of grading, like if you, you, you submit the press release, is it going to be awesome or does it need some work yeah. to reach your goals, etc. And we're doing something similar in investor relations as well, where we're essentially building a earnings call coach. So we host um, uh, earnings calls and do webcasts and we uh, host websites for investor relations uh, for different public companies. And with that, there's a lot of uh, capabilities to use AI and also traditional machine learning to um, improve our product. Dimitri, talk a little bit about why Persistent, knowing your target audiences, your, your solutions for IR and PR, what was it about Persistent, its relationship with Google, that made it the right decision for Notified? So, uh, we've been working with Persistent through an acquisition. They are really good at acquiring uh, consultancy shops, right? There was a company called Media Agility that we worked with for several years before, and they have a team of brilliant data scientists, machine learning engineers, uh, who are kind of become part of your team, number one. Uh, and even if somebody is not working specifically on your project, they have the centers of excellence and they help each other out and we can always go to them for help. Even if we're not necessarily engaged in a particular thing, we'll bounce ideas off of each other. So that's that's been really fruitful and their partnership with Google and now Persistence partnership with Google and the expertise in the space are exceptionally helpful. A lot of this stuff is new, so you know we, we are partnering up on uh, exploring all these new opportunities. Actually, talk about the machine learning and AI 
AI background you guys have, uh, and your skills and, and your team on the generative AI side. Take a minute to explain what you guys are offering, how this comes together, because I mean, this is just going to explode. I mean, what you're talking about with the user value there is incredible. Um, probably just gets a lot of manual labor kind of pushed out of the way. Helps people be prepared for their, their work and their earnings calls. I mean, that's just a game changer. So this is, more of this is coming. Right, right. What, what's it look like inside? What capabilities do you have? Take a minute to explain. Yeah, absolutely. And again, all the work that we have been doing in the past, that is actually leading a path forward for us to, you know, uh, bring the more efficiencies, more automation to our customers. Just like Dimitri said that uh, one of the cool use cases that we worked in, you know, uh, enriching the journalist database where, you know, you scrap the uh, web content, you kind of run it through the NLP and you do the uh, categorization of that content to make the campaigns more successful, in turn customer more successful so that, you know, they see a partner in us. With the you know generative AI, the floodgates are actually open, and I do believe that we are in the early stages of uh, you know kind of exploring that we have to go. What is the path forward? But yeah. some of the you know primary use cases, those are coming to a foreplay. Means uh, may all of a sudden our chatbots are very very intelligent now, right? So uh, what's you the know, coolest thing that Google's got right now in the Gen AI? What models? What, what's what's jumping off the page for yeah. you? Yeah. So uh, and I, I'll take it back to the announcement at the next, I think there are uh, two or three things that I still have to you know, absorb myself into, but uh, the things that I really, really liked was Duet AI integration with the you know, workspace. You, uh, I'll be more smarter when I'm writing my emails, <laughs> writing my documentation, more on the you know, enhancements that they are bringing to the Vertex AI platform, not only you know, hosting their own models, but hosting some of the open source models, enriching their model garden is going to you know, open up the uh, you know opportunities for us, and as I said, that you know conversational uh, intelligence is you know on the rise. But at the same time, uh, some of the digital transformation that generative AI can help, right? That uh, you know uh, code migrations from a particular style to a second style from uh, a data particular database to the alternate database. Those are those are extremely extremely yeah. I would say boring per se means from a technology point of view, but. Yeah. Uh, Generative AI is definitely going to help us in you know, improving those areas. Dimitri, to, to Lisa's question earlier about the relationship, are you, what's your, on your side, it's a lot to deal with, to get up and running fast, so one of the things I see in the cloud game, over the past eight years, managed services has been really popular. Now you need managed services and managed integrations, managed builds. You know, partnering is really key to people, because your alternative is what, you got to staff up, uh, even if you had a couple people, you still got to get more. And then so, so this is, take us through your mindset when you were, were going down this endeavor. Obviously, you're looking at immediate opportunities, so speed to capture is probably yep. top of mind for you, right? Like, move fast. We, we have a core group of internal folks who are architecting solutions. Uh, managing because you know we still own a lot of stuff, own the delivery, but acceleration of speed of development, because we're in a game right now where it's a race, especially in the PR and IR space. It's an interesting industry because it hasn't really been disrupted for a while. Uh, it's kind of been pretty stable. We're doing the disruption. I think we are one of the leaders in uh, driving the disruption, and we're going to want to go faster and uh, harder, and we need to partner up with folks to accelerate our deployment. And speaking of partnering up to accelerate deployments, what are some of the risks associated with AI ML that Persistent is helping you guys to address and eliminate? Well, it's the I mean, uh, there's a lot of fear out there in the market of sure. how this is going to be used. There's security considerations. We've got companies and countries banning certain applications outright right now. So uh, what we're trying to do internally is to work with our customers to navigate those waters uh, in a, in a reasonable pace, but also deliver extra value for them as well. So, you know, with, with Persistent, we just value their uh, thoughts around DevSecOps as well, because one thing is to build something uh, cool as a data scientist, the other thing is actually deploy it into production. So that's one of the key areas uh, that we will all partner with them on. Yeah. What's the coolest thing you're seeing at the show here, Dimitri? What do you, what do you like? Uh, what Data Robot has done with uh, Vertex AI. I mean, I've been following Data Robot for a while, but now the integrations, they uh, have medical large language models that you know predict can triage a patient. 
I was kind of blown away by that. Uh, it's really cool to see. I mean, there a lot of uh, really great uh, presentations as well. So. It's interesting, you know, we talk about this all the time when we were having the previous conversations in the cloud, cloud game. Cloud's great, next gen, you got scale. Now with AI, the actions being taken. So automating away stuff's been around in tech. We love automating things, right? Yep. Auto way, automate repetitive tasks. AI is generating new things. So generative AI is generating new things. It's not just applying machine learning to something. That's going to be changing the outcomes of, of real-time applications. So it's a whole mindset shift on architecture, okay? Admin, we were speculating that the cloud admin would be we automated away. AI will be running the cloud. Mm -hmm. It's yep. the architecture, because it, you're architecting, you got to architect it, and then go after <clears throat> the opportunities in the business. That's Absolutely. where I think I see the pattern emerging here yep. in real time, just thinking out loud, speeds the game. If you go too internally and you know rearrange the deck chairs, as they say, you might miss it. Mm -hmm. Talk about yep. that phenomenon, about how you see that, how you guys see that, because this is some people trying yep. to realize, what's the playbook? Yep, so cloud was anyways pushing the limits for the you know managed services, so uh, many of the services nowadays, when you architect the cloud solution, they are the managed services, so hardly require any admin and you know uh, more human uh, humans working on keeping it up and running. But what we saw, uh, you know, in the keynotes uh, other day, that Vertex AI integration with the Google Cloud and you know helping them in debugging, looking at the error logs and kind of automating some of the actions where they can fix the uh, you know things on the fly. That's amazing. That is where uh, the kind of a real value of the automation and uh, perhaps means that that will free up people to do more yeah. cool stuff, more creative, and you know be more productive. So. Uh, Essentially, instead of you know fear of uh, you know many of us uh, you know had a fear that oh you know people will lose the jobs, but I think we are going to put more productive hours than than before, and this is only going to help in accelerating. And, uh, and team formation is a big thing too, right? Yes. Who's on yeah. the team? Yeah. I just want to say that you know AI is not while we're doing automation, right? We're not. Um, it's not going to get rid of people and positions. <laughs> so it might change a few things, but you know, people are also fearful about that. Yeah. We have an internal uh, citizen developer program where we're trying to educate folks how to help themselves automate some of their routine tasks. Yeah. But it's, it's a you know, people use uh, assistant, copilot, whatever. That's yeah. that's what AI is going to yeah. do. Yeah, I always get a lot of crap when I say cloud admins are going to be automated with bots. Uh, it is a kind of a uh, probe. It is kind of a haymaker. I put it out there, but it brings the question up: the copilot. Augmentation, human creativity. You know, we've been saying on theCUBE that we're going to enter a tech era never seen before where there's a creative culture that will emerge in tech. Not that there wasn't, but it wasn't everyone, right? It's like this potentially impacts everyone's creativity, capturing opportunities, doing their job. So I think the human element is totally le legit. The question is, what's the role? It's the shift. I mean, I remember the bank tellers, Lisa, you know, uh, when big data came out with the Hadoop wave, oh yeah, uh, you know, bank tellers are going to be extinct. It's going to be all ATMs and, and there's more bank tellers now than there was yeah. back then. Yeah, maybe <laughs> it's like, I, I, they're all wrong. Yeah, that's a abundance mindset. And I, I go back uh, like, and want to reflect on Sundar Pichai's you know statement <laughs> that the generative AI or AI is more profound than you know fire or you know steam for that matter. Just like <laughs> in 18th, 18th century we got steam, yeah. in you know 19th century we got electricity, 20th we got <laughs> like a information technology. Now we are in a AI, and you know humans are gonna they'll always have a role, right? Yeah. And uh, you know whether it is writing about the problems that AI is going to solve. I mean, that somebody has to fill in that role, it, or it, you know, it might be the wheel actually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, and and uh, and well, AI AI brings in that efficiency and that consistency in the results. Yeah, you yeah, imagine that yeah. you know, ten years from now, uh, the, there is an automated pl automatic plane landing, right? You don't require pilots to you know make even a fraction of a yeah. mistake. You know, you know, Lisa. I know Lisa wants to get a question, but I want to make one point on that. And there's a famous Steve Jobs video. Um, way back when he was launching the Mac, um, and he kind of quoted it early, the bicycle for the mind, he was talking about the Mac. If you think about that quote, that's kind of an AI kind of vibe right now. Yeah. yeah. Kind of get your mind, scaling intellect is an interesting 
discussion. How do you scale ideas? How do you scale um, creative? So I think this is a really important point that Sundar was making. We totally believe that humans plus AI is better than AI by itself, and I think you're going to start to see more use cases where things come out of that. Absolutely. So that's, it's net new. Yep. I'm curious, you, you mentioned the fear, and we hear that so much in the mainstream media talking about working with media. What is persistence role or, or focus on, from an education perspective, advancing education of all the positives that are already coming out from AI? Do you have a role in that? Yeah, it means, uh, again, whatever we want to do, we want to do responsibly, and the, you, know, you call it as a responsible AI or whichever way, so that's a one aspect of it, it means we are, we address that you know security and the information uh, is well secure when it comes to this but uh, again getting this generative ai this is new to all of us right getting this generative ai in the hands of the people let them feel about it let them play with it that is important aspect of the whole you know uh, revolution from yeah. here onwards right the more people uh, you know the more exposure we give them uh, yeah. i think they'll come up with the cool ideas they'll come up with you know more use cases where it is eventually going to benefit the humanity so that is the part where yeah. you know giving a more exposure and the executives on the top they can decide about the priority prioritization of those uh, you know ideas when they come from you know down up but uh, having this technology in the hands of more and more people right at the you know college or a institution levels before they you know come into even the job market I, I think that is going to change uh, a lot that how we do things yeah I think the point about the smart um, applications that you do as you're building uh, is interesting and in how it renders itself the demo on the day one the duet demo where they go into Gmail and they look at the incidents and then they summarize before and take action that was a game changer because if you look at that that's essentially multiple applications with first party data mm -hmm. and then AI is going cross applications that's awesome I mean that that's a signal of the future and you mentioned data robot with their demo we're going to start to see these new ways that were stumbling blocks in the past. Mm -hmm. First party data, data relationships. I think the whole data world is going to be turned upside down. I've been saying it for years um, and you've know, been preaching that. But now you're starting to see the signs in keynotes. Yep. And on the show floor. Yep, absolutely. So what's the, what do you guys see AI going? That's guess the. Uh, are we drinking too much Kool Aid here on the cube, <laughs> or, or uh, you know? I mean, obviously I, we are in agreement that it's yeah, it is. It's, it's profound for sure. But where's it going next? What has to happen as you see cloud scale come over the top? AI you see is GPUs and TPUs behind us. Yeah, I would say AI is everywhere. I Means uh, we are only realizing it, and you know, talking about it now, but. We have been in this journey for a while. It means we, you know, working in the docs and getting the, uh, you know, hints of your next word. You know, be it uh, any sort of an automation around us, talking to the Google Home and getting things done, playing music, talking to your gadgets. So all that is AI that we are already into it. It is just an amplification, and now the generative part of it, where you, we can, these machines can generate the content that is. Uh, that is either of your liking or it gives you a variety, it gives you a consistency. It, it is more of a creative work going forward than you know anything else. I am sure that a uh, lot of data sci uh, scientists around the world, they are working on uh, improving the LLM models, whether, and also other signal is that, you know, it may be that uh, we are heading towards the world where it's not a one large model, but it is those specific uh, vertical focused models. Like uh, they announced in the, uh, in the next that there is a SEC Palm 2, there is a Med Palm 2. That gives us an indication that we are heading in a direction where those specialized models will help us in uh, specific solving specific use cases. We'll keep our eyes on, on that. Dimitri, last question for you. What's next for Notify, Gen AI? Where do you think your applications are going to go for the company and your target audience? I think the buzz of AI will subside a little bit. It'll just be stuff that we do and use as part of yeah. applications. Specifically for Notify, I mentioned we have a couple of patents. We've built some solutions. We need to go and build those out. So it's about execution at this point. I've attended a couple of these conferences and has participated in a couple of uh, customer calls and kind of panels and it's interesting that a lot of people are still kind of just thinking about it, exploring very cautiously. We're actually doing it. 
we're doing it with partners and uh, I think that's what kind of I think makes Notified stand out a little bit in the market uh, for us specifically right we're gonna you know earnings call coach is a really cool thing that I'm really interested to show a lot more about uh, yeah. soon but it's a you know it's a what does it do? Take a minute to explain. Yeah, so if you think about it as a pre-game, post-game, during-game coaching for an investor relations officer or CFO, you did awesome in your webcast and now your stock price is doing great, or you didn't do so awesome and <laughs> you, there are a few points you might have improved. So, Can we get that for the CUBE interviews? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, that's, that's an interesting thought, yeah. That is an interesting thought. We'll be yeah. calling persistent the first call. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Ashish Dimitri, thank you so much for joining John and me on the program talking about the, the partnership, what you're doing, your thoughts and applications of Gen AI, and some of those predictions for the future. We really appreciate you taking the time to talk with us today. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Our pleasure for having you. Yeah. For our guests and for John Furrier, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE's day three coverage of Google Cloud Next 23, which continues in just a minute. So don't go anywhere.